Hi, my name is Fraser and welcome to GPU Solutions. Today's video might seem simple, but it addresses a critical issue I see too often. GPUs sent in after a failed attempt to replace either thermal pads or paste. A straightforward job gone wrong can leave a card completely dead. So I thought I'd walk you through the proper method using this Zotac Trinity RTX 3090 as an example. We'll cover what to watch out for, how to avoid damage, and the right way of handling both the pads and paste. Before opening a graphic card, the first step is to carefully inspect it, especially the back and the I.O. bracket area. Most AIB partners have screws on the back plate and additional screws on the I.O. panel. Unlike the Founders Edition card, which hides screws under cover or magnetic plates, AIB cards follow more standard layout. And that's what we are focusing on today. On this particular 3090, there are four main screws in an X pattern on the back plate. Two screws near the center and two more near the edge. Some screws are only accessible from the inside, not from the outside. That means you cannot just pull the back plate off. Doing so may damage the PCB. You can either use a manual or an electric screwdriver, but the key is using the correct bit size. I often receive card with stripped or damaged screw heads, simply because someone used the wrong tool. I personally use a battery powered screwdriver with adjustable torque. It's perfect for GPU work because it won't over tighten or damage the board. I'll make a separate video about the tools I use like the screwdrivers since I collected quite a few of them over time. Let's go ahead and remove the back plate screws. There's no specific order needed here. Since the thermal pads and paste are already holding the cooler in place, it won't fall apart as soon as you start. Once the back screws are removed, don't forget the IO panel screws. Different brand use varying numbers. This Zotec has three, but some have two, and cards like Asus often have three or more. Now comes the crucial part, separating the cooler and the PCB. Be careful here to not grab the cooler and pull forcibly. Observe the layout first. In this card, the cooler, metal bracket and the PCB are separate. But some models like Pallet, Asus Strix have the bracket integrated into the cooler. If you're not sure, take your time. If you pull the cooler when it's still attached to the PCB, you're likely to break something. And at this point, the GPU may be beyond repair. Once the cooler is free, the next step is to disconnect the fan and the RGB cables. These connectors can be tied, so don't yank them. Wiggle them gently and if needed, use the precision tweezer to unlock the latch mechanism. You'll notice small side clips that must be gently pushed outwards to release the connector. Always be gentle. This is another stage where many people end up knocking off components. Now that the cooler is off, let's remove the back plate. On this Zotac RTX 3090, a few screws on the top of the PCB hold the back plate in place. That means we need to unscrew them to take the back plate off. Never yank it. This plate is thin and bends easily. A wrapped back plate won't sit correctly and may affect heat transfer. Apply light pressure to slowly work your way around until it comes free. Here, you can see the thermal pads on the bracket and the memory modules. On Zotec and MSI cards, these pads are relatively soft and easy to remove. But with brands like Palette or Gigabyte, the pads are extremely sticky and sometimes thin and hard to take them off. In such cases, I recommend using a flexible plastic scraper, something that won't damage the memory chips or PCB. For softer pads like these, you can just roll them off gently with your fingers. As you're removing the pads, measure them. This step is often skipped, but it's absolutely crucial. Use a vernier caliper to check the thickness. In this Zotec, the front and back memory pads are 2mm, and the pads on the bracket are 3mm. If you're doing this for the first time, don't guess. Measure everything and note it down. Once the pads are removed, it's very easy to forget what went where. Using the correct thickness is vital. Oversized pads do not help. 
In fact, they'll prevent the GPU die from making full contact with the cooler, causing overheating and potentially thermal shutdown or even damage to the core. If you don't have the exact thickness, you can use soft pads that compress easily. One brand that I highly recommend is Upsiron. They are soft, high quality and reliable. I've tried many no-name brands in the past, but Upsiron consistently performs better. Avoid getting fooled by marketing terms like 24 watts per MK and 16 watts per MK. I've tested them both and the difference is negligible. Just stick to the reliable 16 watts of pads like Upsiron and you'll be fine. I usually buy 100 by 100 mm sheets and cut them to size with a metal ruler and a sharp blade. Lay the ruler as a guide to make straight cuts. Precision matters. You want full coverage without overlapping onto the resistors or other components. Once cut, place the pad gently onto the memory module and bracket. Don't press hard, just ensure they sit flush and don't shift during assembly. Before applying new thermal paste, make sure to clean the GPU die thoroughly. I'm using a cotton pad with isopropyl alcohol here, but you can use a lint-free microfiber cloth. Now you'll see many people just drop a blob in the center or make an X to let the cooler spread it. I prefer to spread it myself using a flat tool. That way I can confirm it's covering the entire die and I know exactly where contact is being made. There's no universal right way, do what works for you, but for me, spreading it manually ensures better accuracy, especially when testing cooler contact. With the paste applied and pads in place, we began the reassembly. Start by reinstalling the metal bracket. Use a screwdriver with the correct torque settings. Never over tighten. Excess force can wrap the PCB, crack solder joints under the GPU die or the memory. Just tighten enough until it's snug and stop. Next, attach the I.O. bracket. This Zotac card uses three screws, but other GPUs may have more. Again, keep the screws grouped separately during this assembly to avoid confusion. When reinstalling the cooler, lay it flat on your table and carefully place the PCB on top. This way, gravity works in your favor. Dropping the heavy cooler onto the PCB may break delicate components. The opposite is safer. PCB onto the cooler. Double check fan and RGB connector. Make sure they are properly seated. Once aligned, secure the main cooler screws in a diagonal pattern to distribute pressure evenly. Don't fully tighten one corner before doing the rest. Go gradually. Take care not to over tighten. It may feel like it needs a bit more, but that bit could be enough to crack solder balls under the core or the memory chips. After all screws are installed, inspect the entire card. Check the backplate, I.O. bracket and the cooler to ensure that all screws are present, pads are aligned, nothing is out of place and there's nothing bent or missing. Now the GPU is fully assembled and ready for testing. Let me share something very important. I often receive cards like the RTX 3090s or the 3090Ti's or even the 4090s that were working fine but the user tried to repaste or repaid them to reduce temperatures by a few degrees. Unfortunately, during the process they damaged the board. If your card is running a bit warm but still within the safe limits, leave it alone. There's a saying, sometimes the best fix is to do nothing. If your card runs at 72 degrees Celsius on load and that's normal for its cooler, don't push for perfection. Only open your card if the temperatures are truly out of control, like thermal throttling or crashing. That wraps up this walkthrough on safely replacing thermal pads and paste. We replaced everything on this Zotac RTX 3090, cleaned the die, applied high quality pads and used proper reassembly techniques. Now it's time to test and verify the temperatures are back to normal. If not, I'll reopen it and check what's off. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button.
If you'd like to support my work, you can click join to become a channel member or use the thanks button for a one-time tip. Everything goes into helping me with this channel running. Thank you for watching and as always, take care and I'll see you in my next one. Bye for now. Cheers.